1917, when the U.S. Army entered World War I, our nation was unprepared in many ways. Although an industrial powerhouse, we didn't see ourselves as a world power. The country was not ready for that step. Political, military, and business leaders had not had the strategic foresight to fully prepare for that complexity. As a result, it was a very difficult war for the armed forces and for our nation. This today is a different world with the same challenge of complexity, but at a far faster pace of change. The nation expects us to be ready, to work through the complexity and be ready for the unknown challenges of the future. That's why we have an Army War College. When Secretary of War L. Hugh Root established the Army War College with General Order 155, he anticipated an educational institution that could be a catalyst for educating, planning, and preparing senior military officers to be strategic-minded and to lead change. In its early years in the nation's capital, the college provided planning support to the War Department, but with the nation's entry into World War I, the school closed from 1917 to 1919, when graduates like John Pershing, John Lejeune, and Tasker Bliss planned and led operations on the battlefields of Europe. Over time, its focus shifted from preparing and mentoring the general staff to the academic studies of war. During the interwar years, between World Wars I and II, the Army War College continued to contribute directly to the Army staff's production of planning documents. And much of their effort resulted in the rainbow plans that were developed to meet the threat of a two-ocean war against multiple enemies. Noted Army War College graduates Dwight Eisenhower, Omar Bradley, George Patton, and William Halsey studied at the school during the interwar years, preparing for the strategic challenges of World War II. The school closed again during World War II to meet the wartime demands for leaders. Unlike the period following World War I, it did not reopen at the end of the war. The National Defense University took its place at Fort McNair. But by 1950, Army Chief of Staff General J. Lawton Collins re-established the college to meet the need for Army officers with advanced education. After a temporary period at Fort Leavenworth, the Army War College moved to its permanent home at Carlisle Barracks, selected at the time for the college environment of Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Since 1951, Carlisle Barracks has proved to be uniquely postured to put leader development first, and Carlisle has been an enduring good neighbor. During the past 65 years, War College graduates have led in the conflicts of Korea and Vietnam. They rebuilt the Army in the years leading up to the first Gulf War and into the new millennium. Since 2001, Army War College graduates have led in the global war on terrorism, operations associated with Iraq and Afghanistan, and military operations around the world. Despite the surging demand for leaders in the operations following September 11, 2001, the school remained open, recognizing the critical need to invest in leader development for the nation's future. Today, the Army War College is a collaborative environment, preparing senior leaders for future strategic responsibilities and supporting today's strategic leaders to think through complex problems. Uh, one challenge, not the only challenge, but one of the challenges that the United States has and has had for, for many, many decades uh, is high quality strategic thinking uh, within the higher levels of our military and our government. I think that's very important and that's really what the fundamental role of this war college and any war college is. Uh, almost everybody who comes here, uh, colonels and captains, Navy captains and Army, Air Force, Marine colonels, um, these are folks who have demonstrated high degrees of competence and proficiency at tactics and operations. Uh, now they've got to make the leap, the transition uh, into strategic thinking. Collaboration and relationship building are a way of life here. The student body includes officers from across the joint force, active, reserve and guard, interagency leaders, and international military leaders. Together, they reproduce the partnership and collaboration that will characterize future endeavors. There's a lot of different ways you can sort of unpack that, so particularly when you talk about working around the world uh, in terms of everything from collaborative skills, insight, vision, um, the ability to connect with people, the ability to see other sides of a conversation, to anticipate uh, one, of the tell, one of the things I tell my leaders is you got to look and be able to think three, four, or five terrain features ahead. 
So there's a lot of different parts and pieces, if you will, to strategic leadership. The curriculum evolves continually to anticipate leaders' needs. And in 2017, because of its expertise in developing strategic-minded leaders, the Army War College saw its mission expanded to general officer education for the Army. It's like going to the gym, going to be educated, right? You're exercising muscle, you're pumping blood into muscles. When you're education, when you're in education, it's pumping blood into your brain. It's expanding your thought. It's teaching you how to think differently, how to receive information, how to translate that information, how to articulate that information. Our broader mission here is to win in a complex world, to work through the complexity of today's battlefield, to work through complex interagency challenges. So the Army War College mission has broadened through the years. When we look at the future of the world, the level of unpredictability and the level of change is pretty much unprecedented. And so while they don't know exactly what's gonna happen, we want them to understand the relationship of all the variables out there. So when they start to see one variable change, they know that strategically is probably interconnected to many others. And be able to contextualize and maybe get ahead of that change. The Army War College serves as well as a strategic thinking laboratory, thoughtful studies and research, war gaming and decision analysis, help senior leaders define problems, see the complexity, think through consequences of decisions, and learn to anticipate and think deeper about complex problems. What it does is it begins to give you a framework and gives you a background about how you can begin to think about problems that you're, uh, that you're dealing with and how you might approach them to solve them for our nation. The campus at Carlisle creates a broad community that allows us to synchronize and integrate strategic ideas, strategic mindedness, the Army War College is the nexus of learning for our students and for the nation's military leaders. So leadership is a fundamental component. It's the most important component in my mind of uh, combat power. And we, the Army, spend an awful lot of money, time, effort, resources in developing our leaders and that's as it should be.